Hi, I'm Marshall Gaucher. Um, I'm a software developer here at uh, Electric Coin Company. Uh, and this is a presentation about Testnet in a Box, what it is, why it matters, and who all can use it, uh, and how to get going. Testnet in a Box is a tool used to deploy and customize Zcash peers. Check out the code at Zcash Hackwork slash Zcash Testnet in a Box. There you'll find all the readmes, docs for customizing it, how you get started and spin it up locally. You want to make sure that whatever computer you spin this up on, uh, it has fairly de decent resources, specifically uh, at probably at least eight to four cores and probably 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM, um, and then probably a little bit of disk space. If you don't have those resources, you can always spin this up in the cloud. Uh, Testnet in a box allows the community developers to implement network protocols uh, on Testnet, but in a controlled environment. The other thing is it does is it simplifies how you would do this at scale. So most folks are familiar with spinning up one Zcash full node. Um, this is essentially taking that up to N, so you can scale one to 10 to 100. Uh, the underlying scaffolding also allows you a, uh, like a shared CI model, um, so that if you want to uh, create different versions of these uh, or share the code amongst other developers, uh, you, you all have kind of a common QA type of underlying uh, metric that you can all maintain. And again, some of the, the staples upholding that is it's, again, using all the open source tools that we could. This is essentially the high level view of what Testnet in a box uh, looks like, things you can do with it, and the tools involved and how they interact and flow. Any open source repo or any stack you might have is probably contained in some Git repo. Uh, and then you also might have a component of that that's either Docker or some kind of VM instance that's building that code for you. You can generically point these at your repo, Zcash repo, or something else because you need code to go into the pipeline. And then there's a CI component that takes this code and lets it go down into the cluster. Uh, we use Tekton. We use Kubernetes to then orchestrate and deploy that code when it's built. Two is since you're running it in a continuous fashion, you need some kind of generic cache to load these things in. Uh, so we use a tool called min.io, which is our artifact cache that feeds these deployments. So it's a constant stream of stuff to ideally keep it alive um, and keep it functioning in a graceful manner. So once you have, uh, we call these things bundles. These bundles are then deployed. Um, and then once you've simulated um, that network, you probably want to tool that will be able to monitor this. So we use Grafana to give you the thousand foot view of what's going on. You want some kind of legacy uh, artifact cache that will preserve like the results of your test or your simulation. And IPFS is a tool that we use. It just uses a lot of different open source tools, gives developers a lot of flexibility, but you have a, like a lot of powerful tools at your hand to make something that's production leaning. This repo is under Zcash Hackworks and the Zcash testnet in a box. And this is where all the documents and details I mentioned at the beginning exist. Here, once you're comfortable and you're ready to deploy it, you can hop into readme.sh. Disclaimer, please don't run this as a script directly as of now, uh, because there's a couple timing issues with it. Um, if you step into this and just copy paste uh, these blocks, you should be fine. So for the purposes of saving time, I've deployed this first block over here and the second block. So once you've downloaded the chain uh, and the uh, kube CTL waits and gets into a graceful state, you're ready to deploy um, your test net in a box. So when it finally finishes, you'll have these conditions met. This means it works and it's ready to go. So the next thing you'll do since we're deployed is you want to forward uh, the ports to your local host um, for Grafana so that you can view what's going on. And then you can hop into your browser after clicking on this link right here. So one thing to note, there isn't any data because I just started this up, but if you change this down to say the last 30 minutes or 15 minutes, you'll have a much more uh, recent view of what's going on in the cluster. If you're doing say transactions or things that are running in faster intervals, you probably want to change uh, how often you look at these. And now that you can see that these peers are starting to see each other because we're getting some network traffic, they're beginning to connect. And all these graphs are what you could generate from running RPCs. Grafana is essentially running these on intervals and giving you um, visualizations of this. 
And so depending on whatever your implementation may be, uh, this can look dramatically different. If you're first starting up and you're familiar with Zcash, generically what will happen is you'll have these two miners that we've deployed and you'll start to see a blip probably after a minute or so when they start talking to each other. And then when they finally see each other, you'll begin to see the chain move. And you can go in here if you'd like uh, and see like when your network upgrade deprecates, uh, you can see the number of peers, just any generic thing you could with uh, the RPCs. You might be wondering, how do I actually interact with these peers once they've connected? You can do a number of different things, but a tool that we use to make this a much more uh, seamless process is we use a tool called Lens. And uh, Lens is essentially an IDE that is giving you access into this cluster uh, and a way to interact with it. So you can go download Lens, it's an open source tool. Uh, and go into Lens and you can select your cluster. It should be called Kind Zcash Testnet in the box, but again, whatever you may have customized, that name is probably specific to your project. You should see it spin up and tell you it's in a good state. And then, you might want to see uh, what is going on behind the scenes, and this is showing you all of that. So then, to interact with the pods that are specific to this cluster, at the bottom of pods, you'll see Zcash T and a B and some hash, and then another little hash, and that should match up with these peers to indicate like these are the actual pods that you want to talk to. So say you're on this pod, and you want to interact with it, and see what's going on in Grafana, uh, and maybe sanity check that what you're seeing in Grafana is true. So with Lens, you can go into Lens for each of these pods, and to get shell access to this, you go up to this little shell icon, and you click it, and you can run RPCs, um, any of the RPCs, and maybe new ones that you have implemented, uh, simply by running a command um, that is in the tutorial uh, towards the bottom, uh, and it's Zcash RPCs. And you don't need this first command because you're already on it. You just want the second command because it assumes you're on the pod and you now want to run the RPC. So you just copy paste this command essentially up to here and then replace it with whatever RPC you're used to. And we ran a git info looking at this to make sure that we're on the same one. We say check the height, 1014531, and there we see that. Uh, say you're doing um, log aggregation or some kind of cluster um, analytics. Lens also gives you that ability. So we go back to this pod. We go up into the left align icon that says logs, and you can look at the logs just like you would on a normal Zcash node. The uh, file specifically debug.log, um, likely in your testnet three folder if you're on testnet. You know, sky's the limit with what you can do here. Uh, you can go up to, I believe, 100,000 lines. Lens will actually give you the ability to archive stuff. But you might wonder, well, how would I scale this up? Um, or how would I customize it to, say, 10 nodes or 100 nodes? That's a very easy thing to do. Um, so say we want to spin up four four nodes instead of two, but we want them to follow the same type of uh, recipe, you could say, um, to just create copies of the same thing. You can run a command called kubectl scale dash dash replicas, and then four is the number of nodes. Um, depending on your system resources, you can run that up to whatever you want. Uh, and then the name of the deploy. Uh, and this is in the documents too. So when you get to this point, um, there's plenty of docs on it. and uh, at that point, too, you probably would want to look at how to customize bundles because um, your odds are you'll be adding non-miners um, and other kinds of nodes. So we'll run this, and you can go over here at Grafana. Uh, remember, we are in 10-second intervals, so it's just about 10 seconds. You'll see no data pop up for these new nodes that have came up. Um, and there again, they're going to go through the same process that these other ones went through. They're discovering their other peers. So initially the graphs will be sparse or there'll be nothing in them. Um, but you should see blips like we did here when um, these new nodes connect. And when you're getting to the point where you're customizing these nodes 
and you know that you can run your own RPCs, you can do transactions just like you would um, on any other node. And you'll see, ideally, this uh, wallet widget will fill up with your balances. And the widget that will probably be very useful is the mempool. Because I have just miners on this cluster, uh, there's no transactions. So this mempool is very flat. But again, if you're customizing it, and you want to tool the sanity check doing transactions, this mempool will give you a little bit of a lens into that to see what's going on. So now that you see how uh, Testnet Box op operates and some of the things that you can customize uh, and how you can interact with this uh, Testnet Box and how you can scale it up and down, um, you can then see how you can actually finally test uh, a given network implementation for, say, a day, a month, a year, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and how you can archive all that data and you can interact with other developers and community members to make sure that like all the QA is maintained and that this is going to be a feasible thing that will work in a live environment. We want to have predefined test nets so that folks can just all come to say test net one and be implementing some consensus protocol, but they're all connecting to it and working in a box and it's not affecting anyone say on testnet two because they're working on a completely different consensus system is growing to support mac windows is getting a little bit more traction with uh kubernetes and things so we can support those ecosystems for some of the tinkers and hobbyists out there uh, we also do have arm support uh, but you can create really cost efficient clusters if you have like resource constraint you're not just stuck um, running this on a supercomputer. there are new network seeders that are being distributed is the legacy seeder, zcash.seeder. Um, you may even be able to use your own seeder that you've created um, and test to see like um, maybe that performs better or worse than other ones. A lot of the newer stacks you'll notice are using um, like some of the light clients and you can start uh, taping on like light wallet D or other variants that talk through there uh, and Android SDKs, iOS stacks, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can build out a really robust uh, it, like siloed off network through testnet. A lot of these layers you can bring in and bring out. You can put in faucets, maybe your own faucet. Uh, you can also experiment with block explorers. Maybe you want to write your own block explorer, but you have no network to test it against. Then you can generate all that data in a very meaningful way. You can come in and implement mixed net things or whatever implementation you're doing and get a little bit of a bounded understanding of how that works uh, at scale and in a silo. Since you have that parallel uh, layer uh, and you can distribute them amongst multiple pods and run individual tests. So then instead of having sequential tests that take two hours, you can have five pods that maybe run four or five tests and then cut your test time down to, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. There we do have Android and iOS builders that you can use. Get into some of these different niches and you, you kind of want to hear some of the the wisdom maybe more or less that we have, uh, you can go ahead and uh, ping us in the uh, testnet in a box repo or just create an issue. Uh, and we'll be more than happy to hop on and maybe chat with you about it or uh, give some of our advice about uh, approaches and things we learned.